Hey guys, welcome to History University. My name is Tom and I'll be your educator for this video. Today we have another episode of Badass Moments in History, the series where I talk about badass people doing badass things. The first moment comes from the man you all know and love and is the prototype of the cartoon that I use to represent myself, Julius Caesar. In 75 BC, a young 25-year-old Julius Caesar was on his way to the island of Rhodes. On his voyage, he was kidnapped by Sicilian pirates. At the time, Caesar was a nobleman, so the pirates realized they could ransom him off for some good money. The pirates decided to ask for 20 talents of silver, which is valued at around $600,000 today. Caesar then laughed at this offer and told them that he was worth at least 50 talents of silver, which is well over $1 million. The pirates then set off their associates to collect the 50 talent ransom. Over the course of the next 38 days, Caesar spent his time as a captive. But he wasn't the typical captive. He spent time composing and reciting poems, as well as writing speeches. He would then recite these works to the pirates. He often joined in with the pirates playing various games and participating in their exercises. Overall, he wasn't even acting like a prisoner. He kind of got along with the pirates. The pirates ended up respecting the young Caesar and gave him a lot of freedom to do whatever he wanted while he was a captive. Once he was set free, he managed to quickly raise a small fleet, which he took back to the island where the pirates held them. He captured all the pirates, took back his 50 talents of silver, and claimed all of their possessions. He then delivered the pirates to the authorities and petitioned to have the pirates executed. The council refused and suggested that they should sell the pirates into slavery. Caesar did not like the decision and he brought the pirates back to the island where he was held captive. Caesar then ordered all of the men to be crucified. Pretty brutal revenge story, but the moral of the story is you don't insult Julius Caesar by asking for a ransom too low. He will be completely embarrassed by how little you value him and he will make sure he gets his revenge. The next badass tale that I want to tell you is from pretty recent history. It comes from the Boston Marathon in 2017. But before I dive in, let's have a brief history of the marathon. In 490 BC, the Persians were invading Greece. A battle occurred near the small Greek village of Marathon. The Greeks won the battle, and a man named Pheidippides ran 25 miles from Marathon to Athens to report the news of victory. This is why marathons today are roughly the exact length of Marathon to Athens. Upon reaching Athens, Pheidippides yelled the word Nikomon, which means we win in Greek, and is derived from the Greek word Nike, which means victory. After shouting victory to the Athenians, Pheidippides dropped dead from exhaustion. Now, marathons are commonplace for runners around the world, like our next badass, Catherine Switzer. Her badass moment comes in 2017, when at the age of 70, she finished the Boston Marathon. Doing one-eighth of a marathon is a major workout for most people, so the fact that she did it at 70 years old is super impressive in its own right. But besides the physical feat of the marathon, the 2017 marathon was the 50th anniversary of Catherine's first attempt at the Boston Marathon. In fact, Catherine Switzer is the first woman ever to run a marathon with men. All the way back in 1967, a 20-year-old Catherine Switzer made history by becoming the first woman to ever officially enter the Boston Marathon. Having checked the rule book of the Boston Marathon, she noticed that there was no rule regarding gender. Switzer registered for the race using her official amateur athletic union number. She also signed her name as K.V. Switzer, stating that her name had been misspelled on her birth certificate, so she would use her initials to avoid the confusion. Despite completing the registration, race officials opposed women competing in the marathon. When Switzer attempted to run the marathon, the race manager, Jock Semple, was repeatedly attacking Switzer to get her off the race. Eventually, Semple was pushed over by Switzer's boyfriend, who was also running the race. The Boston Athletic Association director, Will Cloney, said, Women can't run in the marathon because the rules forbid it. Unless we have rules, society will be in chaos. I don't make the rules, but I carry them out. We have no space in the marathon for an unauthorized person, even a man. If that girl were my daughter, I would spank her. In the next few years, the Boston Marathon would ban women from participating. But in 1972, the Boston Marathon created a women's marathon. Today, marathon record times are gendered. Due to biological differences, men tend to run much faster marathon times. For example, Switzer was the women's winner of the 1974 New York City Marathon with a time of 3 hours and 7 minutes. Although she did have the fastest time for any woman, she came in 59th place overall, behind 58 men. 
Interestingly enough, women tend to be much better at super long distances. On average, women are 0.6% faster than men in races that are over 200 miles long. If you want to learn more about Catherine and her story, check out her website. I'll leave a link down below. Our last badass tale comes from a guy you may not know, the Candy Bomber. Colonel Gail Havarson earned the title of badass with his 1948 and 1949 Berlin airlift flights. Immediately after World War II, Germany was split up into multiple zones. Inside of the Soviet-occupied Germany was Berlin, and Berlin itself was split up between East and West. The Soviets decided to blockade railroads to Berlin to make it more difficult for the Americans to reach West Berlin. The Berlin blockade caused Americans to drop off supplies via flights. During his flights, Halvarsson would fly to Berlin and then deeper areas in the Soviet-controlled territories to drop off candy for children. For the next 25 years, Halvarsson advocated and performed similar candy drops in Bosnia-Herzegovina, Albania, Japan, and Guam. In 2004, he advocated for a similar series of candy drops over Baghdad. Halvarsson said it would be a symbol that somebody in America cares. And since that time, the U.S. military has emulated much of his actions. There have been multiple airdrops that have dropped toys, teddy bears, soccer balls, and more to the Iraqi children. Today, Gail is doing great at the ripe old age of 99. He will be turning 100 later this month in October. It is only fitting that the candy bomber would be born in Spooktober, which is the same month as Halloween. Gale is like the human embodiment of Halloween. He just gives out candy to people with the hope of making them happy. Alright guys, that wraps up for this episode of Bad Ass Moments in History. I want to thank you guys for tuning in today. I also want to give a shout out to the YouTuber crowd for letting me repost his video. It got me a lot of new subs and viewers, so some of you guys might already know Kraut because you came from his channel. But if you do not know him, I recommend you check out his page. He has amazing content, and I personally think he is one of the best, if not the best, YouTuber out there. Once again, thank you for watching, like and subscribe if you can, and most importantly, have a good day.